Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Stephanie, and I'm Tom. Hey, it's our literature unit, and we're actually going to talk about a book I love. A lot of our books that we talk about I've never read before. This one is so famous.、Uh, Gone with the Wind, a story of war, love, and survival.、Um, I think for a lot of the the women, at least, who have read the book, we、um, we kind of liked it because there's this wonderful romance in it. Although there are other parts to the story as well, you see it says war there and survival, which might appeal to more of the guys, perhaps.、Uh, yeah, so I guess there's a little something for everyone here,、mm. and of course, I'm only familiar with the movie of this starring Clark Gable. And was it Vivian Lee or somebody? Vivian Lee. Oh,、uh, I got the name right. Yeah.、Hey. Even though I haven't seen the movie in its entirety, I've only seen it in bits and pieces here and there. Which I can't believe. But yeah, it's a pretty famous movie. But、mm -hmm. uh, you know, I did not know that this was actually a novel to begin with, and hence we have <laughs> our unit on literature all about this novel. Yeah, it was.、Uh, it was a big book.、Uh, my mom, I think, recommended it to me. I was a big reader when I was a little girl. Um, I read so much. I think I read this book when I was even in fourth grade, fifth grade. Anyway, I loved it. And the movie, of course, has two very handsome,、um, handsome and beautiful actors. So I like the movie as well. We're going to be talking about the plot as we usually do in our literature unit. Go through the story and what the story is actually about, and then we'll spend some more time talking about. The author and some of the themes.、Uh, Margaret Mitchell was the person who wrote this book. I remember when I finished this book, I was so excited to get the、uh, you know the the sequel to it. I didn't know she hadn't written another book that followed up on the story because at the end of Gone with the Wind, it doesn't quite end the way you want it to. Does not have a happy ending, huh? Well, not if you were rooting for、uh, you know. The two to get together, but、uh, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Right now, though, as we always do, we're going to read through our lesson first. It is 1861, the eve of the American Civil War. The wealthy, young, and gorgeous Scarlett O'Hara lives with her family at Tara, a cotton plantation in Georgia. Scarlett has many suitors, but desires to marry Ashley Wilkes, a family friend. However, she learns that Ashley is engaged to Melanie Hamilton, his cousin from Atlanta. Scarlett angrily confronts Ashley and confesses her love for him. Ashley admits he loves Scarlett, but still intends to marry Melanie. Scarlett slaps him. And he leaves the room. She abruptly learns that Rhett Butler, a man with a bad reputation, despite coming from a respectable family, has overheard their conversation. War is declared, and many young men join the Confederate Army. Scarlett agrees to marry Melanie's brother Charles out of spite. Ashley and Melanie wed, and the gentlemen go off to war. Soon after, Charles dies of pneumonia, leaving Scarlett with their newborn son Wade. Scarlett resents her roles as a mother and widow. She and a slave, Prissy, leave Tara for an extended trip to visit Melanie's family in Atlanta. During this time, Scarlett strikes up a friendship with Rhett, who is earning a profit and helping the South as a blockade runner. Ashley is granted a short leave from the army, and this visit leaves Melanie pregnant. Melanie gives birth during the Union Army siege of Atlanta, which leaves the city in flames. Scarlett asks for Red's help in evacuating Atlanta with Prissy, Wade, Melanie, and Melanie's baby Bo. He gets a horse and carriage for them, but abandons them on the way to Tara. To join the Confederate Army, Scarlett and the others drive the long and dangerous way all night back to Tara.
Okay, everybody. Let's talk about the contents of today's lesson. The novel's title is "Gone with the Wind." Yeah, if the wind blows, of course things get blown away. I guess that's a way of referring to things that、uh, have happened and they're gone and they're over with, and there's really nothing you can do about it. But this particular story is about war, about love. And survival, especially if there's a war going on, you want to keep on living. You don't want to die. You want to survive. Survival, of course, is the noun there. Now let's set the scenario here for you. It is 1861. Okay, that's a long time ago.、Mm -hmm. The eve of the American Civil War. Yes, the American Civil War between the North and the South took place between 1861 and 1865, if my history is correct here. So it's the eve. Of the war, it's just when it's about to start, like Christmas Eve. That's the day or the night before Christmas. Although here, I don't think it's the night before. It just might be, you know, the the period of time right before it starts. Yep. Yeah, there are some characters in this story, and we hope you get their names straight.、Uh, here are a couple of them. We've got a wealthy, young, and gorgeous Scarlett O'Hara, and she lives with her family at Tara. Tara is the name of their family's home plantation.、Uh, it was so big that a lot of people, especially back then, would give their their homes and their their land names, which is kind of fun. If you ever go to Georgia, you can actually go see the home they used in the film,、uh, which is quite beautiful. It's a tourist attraction. So there's Tara. That's the name of their home and land. And Tara is actually a cotton plantation in Georgia. We use this word plantation when we're talking about、uh, a lot of land where crops are grown there. And back then, of course, most of their crops seemed to be、uh, tobacco, right? So the weather was great for growing tobacco, and and coffee, sugar was also grown there as well. But、uh, I think on their particular land, they were growing tobacco. Okay, so of course, down south in the American South, there were lots of cotton plantations, and、uh, I guess in Indonesia there are lots of、uh, coconut plantations,、oh, really? or things like that.、Uh, but in any case, yeah, a plantation just means a really, really big farm with lots of people working there. You know what, Tom? I wanted、yep. to mention something because we grew up in America, and the American Civil War was about slavery,、sure. pretty much. Uh, the Southerners wanted to keep the slaves as slaves, working for free, not having freedom. Northerners wanted to let the slaves go free. They thought that、uh, slavery was horrible. So when I was growing up, I always thought plantation also included slaves, but it、mm. doesn't, because,、um, like you just said, Indonesia has really big、uh, pieces of land where they grow crops, and they call theirs plantations.、Uh, exactly. But、uh, at least if you're in America, when somebody mentions the word plantation, we will think of the Civil War,、yeah. and we will think of slaves and cotton、yeah. and stuff like that. So the main character in this novel is Scarlett O'Hara, and Scarlett has many suitors, <laughs> but desires to marry Ashley Wilkes, a family friend. A suitor, of course, is a man who is chasing after a woman. He wants to ask her hand in marriage. This、uh, word is most often used in literature. We don't really use this in modern times. Like、uh, I know, you know, Xiaoling. You know, she has lots of suitors. You、mm -hmm. know, but、uh, we wouldn't say that. We would say that she has lots of guys who are interested in her, or lots of guys who are chasing her. Yeah, yeah, it is kind of an old-fashioned word. Well, she really has a crush on Ashley Wilkes.、Um, however, she does learn that Ashley is engaged to Melanie Hamilton. Who is the sweetest girl in the whole movie and the book? She's just a lovely person, and、um, he's actually marrying his cousin from Atlanta. Probably not their first cousin. They're probably you know second or third cousins.、Uh, they did that back then. Scarlett finds this out because she thinks she's the most beautiful thing around. How could you possibly want anyone else but me?、Mm. That's how she thinks. Well, she goes and confronts Ashley. And tells Ashley she loves him. They never did this back then, especially. You know,、um, the ladies would always wait for the guy to propose marriage or say I'm interested in you. She just confesses that she loves him. But Ashley tells Scarlett, 
You know, yeah, I love you too. Everyone loves Scarlett. She's very attractive and she has a big personality. But he says he still intends to marry Melanie, probably because he can see Melanie as a lovely soul who won't go crazy after a little while. Who knows how Scarlett would behave、um, if they had any sort of difficulties in their marriage? If you intend to do something, guys, it means that's your purpose, that's your goal. It's something you're planning to do.、Uh, it may not happen, but that's what you've planned to do. For example, most kids. Um, intend to graduate from high school and then get a job or go on to college. That's their intention.、Uh, your intention is the noun form of that word. To intend to do something, that's the verb form. Yep, he wants to marry Melanie here. That's his intention. Scarlett slaps him <laughs> and leaves the room. How could you possibly like someone like that? I'm the big prize here. Can't you see all my suitors here? And I'm offering you. <laughs> To, I'm offering myself to you.、Yeah. How can you turn this offer down? You <laughs> are silly. You are insane. That's、mm-hmm. ridiculous.、Uh, I am greatly embarrassed by this. I am overwhelmed. So she slaps him, which means she hits him in the face with her open palm, and she abruptly learns that Rhett Butler, a man with a bad reputation, despite、uh-huh. coming from a respectable family, has overheard their conversation. So abruptly means suddenly. As if someone were interrupting you, okay? Abruptly, she quickly、mm-hmm. learns that this guy named Rhett Butler overheard their conversation. So, overheard here is the past tense of the verb to overhear, which means you hear someone talking, but you weren't really supposed to. It was supposed to be a private conversation, but you heard it somehow. Maybe you were in the next room, or on the other side of the wall, or wherever. It doesn't mean that you intentionally tried to listen to a conversation that was private. Sometimes it was an accident. Sometimes it wasn't. You know, sometimes you actually are trying to overhear a conversation、uh, so that you can go gossip about it. Yeah, Rhett Butler. Keep that name in mind. He's the one who is played by Clark Gable, the handsome actor, and then of course the other lead actress would be Vivian Lee, who plays Scarlett O'Hara. Right now, we're going to take a quick break, guys. Listen to our Chinese teacher, and then we'll be back to continue talking about "Gone with the Wind." Hello, my name is Shelby. Now, continuing Unit Thirteen, Chinese explanation. Guizhu Qianjin, good scholar, how to live in the modern era in China? First sentence, the second sentence. He lives in a Tala Farm, a flower growing area. The second sentence is a cotton plantation. The farm has several English expressions. Farm 是最常通称的，面积很大，有农作物，也饲养动物。Ranch, R A N C H， 通常指饲养动物的农场，例如 a cattle ranch， 母牛场。A plantation 多指栽种高经济作物，例如 a coffee plantation。下一句，他有许多追求者，但只想嫁给 Ashley Wilkes。句子中的 suitors， 追求者，以结婚为目的，这是老派说法。现在多以 admirer, a d m i r e r, 爱慕者来表达。去掉字尾 o r, suit 是适合、方便，名词套装。例如说，红色适合你 ，the red color suits you. Ashley 是中性名，男女都适用，所以不要误会这里的 Ashley Wilkes 是女性哦。虽然 Ashley 承认他爱好思佳，但还是打算和 Melanie 结婚。第六句句中的动词 intend， 打算、计划，加 to v 或 v i n g。Intend to marry Melanie， 也可以说 intend marrying Melanie。另外，它也有意指、意思是这样的含义，常用被动形态，例如这些职位是给新来的 ，these posts are intended。For the newcomers, we're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. It's our literature unit, and we're talking about. The book Gone with the Wind. It was then later made into a movie. I, I wow, I've probably seen this movie on TV, probably seven times, if not more. 
And for a while, they were even bringing it back. Uh, to play it in theaters, which is really fun if you could see it in a big screen. It's a really, really popular film too. So we're talking about the plot. Before we left you, we introduced、uh, four characters. They're probably what I would say are the primary characters in the book.、Um, they're Scarlett O'Hara, who's gorgeous and selfish and spoiled. There is Ashley Wilkes. He's kind of cute. He's very weak though. And then there's Melanie Hamilton. You'll come to find out she is an angel, and she's a lovely person. Well, Ashley, you know he says, "Yeah, I I like you or I love you, Scarlett, but I'm going to marry Melanie." He knows Melanie's a better bet、uh, to marry than probably Scarlett. We're also introduced to Rhett Butler. He's gorgeous, but you know he he's kind of naughty. You know he gets away with doing things most people wouldn't do, but he's very handsome. And、uh, he overhears that embarrassing conversation where Scarlett tells Ashley she loves him, and he says, "I'm sorry, but I'm marrying Melanie," and she slaps him. So keep that in the back of your mind. Rhett knows this has happened. And then something happens. War is declared. Okay, so the North and the South decide that they're going to have a war over slavery. So they declare the war. And many young men join the Confederate Army. So this is taking place in Georgia,、mm-hmm. which was a Southern state in the Civil War, which was also referred to as the CSA or the Confederate States of America or the Confederacy. And Confederate here、uh, is the adjective; it just refers to anything to to do with the CSA, the Confederate States of America. The gray, you know, the guys who wore the gray suits and stuff like that. The ones who lost. The rebels, sometimes、yeah. they're referred to as. And Scarlett agrees to marry Melanie's brother Charles out of spite. <laughs> spite means hatred here. So out of spite means, hey, you're going to marry Melanie. Well, then I'm going to marry Melanie's brother. I guess Scarlett is not really in love with Charles. Oh no. She just wants to make Rhett Butler jealous. No, she wants to make Ashley jealous. Ashley. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting the names like, mixed up. She doesn't like. She doesn't like Rhett at all that way. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. These are. These are things I have trouble keeping track of in these romance <laughs> novels, but、yeah. uh, what happens next is Ashley and Melanie wed,、mm-hmm. which means they get married,、yes. and the gentlemen go off to war. They are required to fight for their country, which is the southern country there, the CSA, the Confederate States of America. So they go off to fight the Yankees, the Northerners. They're going to、mm-hmm. fight them at Bull Run and Antietam and places like that. And actually, they did quite well in that war. Well, soon after we've got Charles, who、um, is married to Scarlett. He dies of pneumonia. Pneumonia is a sickness where your lungs get filled up with liquid, and、uh, it's just hard to breathe. And essentially, they die because they don't get enough oxygen. And he dies, leaving Scarlett alone with her newborn son. So she's already had a baby. Her baby's name is Wade. Well, little Miss Scarlett. Resents her roles as a mother and widow. Yeah, she doesn't like to have responsibility. She likes to go to dances and flirt with guys. She doesn't really like anything that's too serious. Now, if you resent something, you're mad about something.、Uh, usually, it's a person or a situation, and you think there's something about that that is unfair to you. So you're just a little bitter about it, you know.、Um, well, she resents her roles as a mother and widow. Widow, of course, refers to a woman whose husband has passed away. Now, if a guy has a wife that has passed away, he is referred to as a widower. So, an er is added to that. They're not the same word. So, if you see widow, that's the woman whose husband has died. Widower, the man's wife has died. Yep. So she resents this situation.、Yeah. Why do I have to be a mother? <laughs> I'm a beautiful woman. I should be taken care of. Work? What is that? You can hire servants and slaves and stuff like that.、Mm-hmm. So she resents the fact that she has to be a mother, and she no longer has a husband to support her and give her lots of money, so she can go out with her friends and buy jewelry and stuff like that. And she and a slave, Prissy, leave Tara for an extended trip to visit Melanie's family. In Atlanta, which、mm-hmm. of course is the largest city and capital city, I believe, of the state of Georgia, and so this is a slave woman here by the name of Prissy, and they leave together. They leave Tara, and they go to Atlanta 
to visit Melanie's family. So they're going to have a family visit in Atlanta. Well, during this time,、uh, Scarlett strikes up a friendship with Rhett. Rhett, who's a little bit, like I said, naughty, and he does things that are a little shocking, and it appeals to Scarlett because she's kind of like that rebel character as well. To strike up a friendship means just to start a friendship. We'll also often use this、uh, verb phrase to talk about beginning a conversation with someone. Oh, they struck up a conversation, and and、uh, you know could see that they would be great friends. They had a lot of interests in common. Well, she um she becomes friends with Rhett because it's a way um to earn some money. So how is he earning money? He's earning a profit and helping the South as a blockade runner. So、um, when they were fighting the Civil War, the North and the South、uh, didn't want each each side to get goods or products that they needed. So they would put these、uh, big blocks up so that the other side couldn't get through. And he was helping the South block the Northerners from coming down. But he made a lot of money off the war. He was kind of a stinker. Now Ashley's granted a short leave from the army. If you have a short leave. It just means you're given permission to go for a while and then come back. Maybe you've had a, a funeral that you have to attend. You would get a short leave, go and attend it, and then come back. So Ashley、um, comes back from the army for a little while, and while he's there, he and Melanie、uh, get pregnant. So Melanie is then pregnant, and you see her give birth during the Union Army's siege of Atlanta. Tom, what's a siege? Uh, that's when, of course, an army attacks a place and takes it over and causes a lot of damage. So, yes, the Union Army refers to the Northerners,、mm-hmm. the Yankees, the guys in the blue coats, and they come down and they attack Atlanta. They siege Atlanta, and of course, they set the、uh, city on fire, like the Americans did to Tokyo, and that leaves the city. In flames, it's burning, and Scarlet asks for Rhett's help in evacuating Atlanta with Prissy, and also there with Wade, Melanie, and Melanie's baby, whose name is Bo. Okay, so cute. Yeah,、uh, it's a cute kid indeed. So she's helpless there in Atlanta. Oh, the、uh, the Yankees are invading. They're burning our city. We need to get out of here. You've got to come and help us. So she asks for Rhett's help. Come and save us from the burning city. He does get a horse and a carriage for them so that they can get away. But instead of going with them and driving the carriage for them, he goes off to join the Confederate Army.、Uh, because all this time he's been making money off the war. He'll take products that the South has, slip into the northern part, and then bring things back for the South, and then sell things in the north. He's a, he's been making money. For the first time, we see Rhett in this story act more like a heroic guy. He's actually fighting for his side,、uh, the Confederate Army. Meanwhile, Scarlett and the others make that long and dangerous drive all the way back to Terra, and she's pretty tough. Scarlett is the one that gets them back there, so we find out she's pretty tough as well. That's all the time we have today to talk about the plot, but we're going to continue talking about it in our next program. Because there's more that happens in the book, but we got to wrap it up right now. We're gonna listen one more time to our Chinese teacher. 战争爆发，男性都加入联盟军。第二段第一句中的 the Confederate， 原意是同盟、共犯。他和他的共犯都被捉了。He and his confederates are arrested. 这里大写前面加个 the， 表专有名词，指南方的联盟军，而北方的联军就叫做 the Union。U N I O N， 好斯家为了泄愤，嫁给 Melanie 的弟弟查理。第二句后面 ，out of spite， 出自于愤怒。spite 原意是恶意、愤怒。out of 加情绪名词，表示出自于什么心情。例如 ，out of curiosity， 出自于好奇心。另外，惯用片语 in spite of， 虽然。是 spite 常见片语，相当于 despite。举个例子 ，We went out in spite of the bad weather. 天气不好，我们还是出去了。下一句，后来查理死于肺炎，留下好斯家与小孩。动词 die， 死亡原因不同的时候，要接不同的介系词。因疾病死亡 die of， 例如 He died of cancer， 他因为癌症去世。
因外伤死亡 die from， 例如 he died from wounds， 他受伤而死。因为战争、贫穷等 die in， 例如 he died in poverty， 他贫困而死。逗号之后的 living 是省略连接词 end， 动词 left， 遗留变成 living 的分词构句 ，live 在这里当遗留。后来，好斯加跟瑞德建立起友谊。第六句 ，strike up a friendship。strike 动词，原意是打击、碰撞，或者是点燃火柴。习惯用于 strike up a friendship with somebody， 和某人做朋友，而且是非常迅速，很默契，好像天生一对。暗示好斯加跟瑞德非常绝配。三态是 strike、struck、struck、struck。而瑞德靠跑封锁突围来帮助南方。句尾的 blockade runner 中文封锁，英文可以用 to block、to close off 或者是 to blockade 等来表达。blockade 可当做名词，搭配动词 lift 取消 l i f t 或者是 impose 实施 i m p o s e 表示解除或实施封锁。Blockade runner 就是指跑封锁突围的人。下一句，魏西里获准从军队短期的休假。动词 grant 答应给予，尤其是上对下的给予。例如 ，She granted our wish， 她同意如我们所愿。相较之下 ，give 给是最通用的用字，而 present p r e s e n t 就有下呈现给上的意味。A short leave。Leave 表示准许、准假当名词。例如，他在休假中 ，She's gone on leave， 病假 ，sick leave。第八句的后半句，这场战役使这个城市变成一片火海。Which 是关系代名词，代替前面的 the siege 为攻。动词 leave 当及物动词，后面加受词，再加受词补语，表示让什么处于某种状态。后面的 in flames 燃烧着。使整个城都燃烧着。Flames 是一束火焰，但通常写成复数 flames， 搭配动词，例如 burst into flames， 突然烧起来。另外表示火的 fire 或者是 blaze，b l a z e， 火势比较猛烈，比 flames 大很多。后来 Red 帮助好斯加他们离开，但他中途却抛下他们参加联盟军。好，剩下的故事明天继续。谢谢收听。Okay, guys, that's it. We're gonna have to say goodbye for now, but again, join us for our next program. We're gonna continue talking about a really, really famous novel, Gone with the Wind, for English Digest. I'm Stephanie, and I'm Tom. Goodbye. Bye.